Most countries that have nuclear weapons went to a great deal of effort to acquire them, and so the odds of them ever willingly giving them up are pretty slim, with some notable exceptions. So when you're a brand new country like Ukraine in 1991 and you've just been handed the third largest nuclear arsenal in the world, and thereby a boatload of clout, why would you give it up? Why did Ukraine disarm its nuclear weapons? So to begin, when the USSR came down with a mild case of collapse, things like the armed forces, administration and its industry were mostly divided up by whatever happened to be within a nation's new borders. And for Ukraine, as well as Belarus and Kazakhstan, this meant that they got to keep the nuclear weapons that the previous Soviet government had left on their soil. Now, when the USSR collapsed, there was a lot of discussion amongst the nuclear powers about how these new nuclear states would be treated and importantly how to get them to disarm. Belarus and Kazakhstan quickly made it clear that they didn't want to keep these nuclear weapons and so they asked for help in getting rid of them. Yet, when it came to the subject of nuclear disarmament, Ukraine's new government wasn't saying much, and it became clear that its leaders were clearly thinking of keeping them. So why didn't they? Well, the first reason was the lack of political willpower. Ukraine's economy was firmly in the toilet in 1991. And so, maintaining a nuclear weapons program when people are struggling to find work isn't exactly a good look. There was a lot of pressure from opposition parties, the general public, and importantly, the international community. And this plays into the second reason why, the United States. The Western powers had together created a series of large financial aid packages for the former Soviet states. And whilst many nations had no conditions on their aid, the American assistance had one caveat no more nuclear weapons. America wanted this because it had just signed a series of nuclear disarmament treaties with the USSR and Ukraine keeping them would have slowed any potential progress, because nobody knew if it actually counted towards Soviet disarmament or not. The third reason was that whilst the Ukrainian government could have maintained the bombs, creating a brand new nuclear weapons program from scratch would have been very difficult. They'd have gotten no outside help and leaving a bunch of nukes on the shelf for 30 years without knowing how to handle them isn't exactly safe. To further make things more difficult, Ukraine didn't actually have the ability to use the weapons, since things like armament codes and the know-how for launching ICBMs was the exclusive remit of the Moscow-based armed forces, and they weren't going to share. These could have been reverse engineered eventually, but again, it was a lot of time, a lot of money and a lot of political capital just to upset everyone. So why even consider keeping them at all? Well, it was because owning such weapons could essentially guarantee that you'd never be invaded since the cost for the invader would be far too high. And for those who lived in Ukraine, there were fierce memories of the last time such an invasion happened. The world's powers understood this concern and so they all came to an agreement the Budapest Memorandum. This saw the USA, Russia and the UK all agree to mutually respect the territorial integrity of these three states in return for their nuclear disarmament. This wasn't a defensive treaty, just a promise to agree that this was Ukraine and that the powers involved wouldn't use military or economic actions to destabilise it. The Ukrainian government accepted this and that sweet aid money quite happily because its primary concern was that the United States would use economic sanctions against it which this treaty protected against with the backing of Russia, whom the Ukrainian government saw as a steadfast friend, since their only major post-Soviet disagreement by this point was about basing rights in Crimea, which fortunately would be sorted out pretty quickly and would never ever come up again. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching, with a special thanks to my patrons, James Bizanet, Kelly Moneymaker, Marvin Cassow, Mo, Aaron the White, James Castaneda, Marcus Arsner, Jordan Longley, Gustav Swan, Rashid Ali, Jerry Lambden, Maggie Paskowski, Copper Tone, Winston Kaywood, Spencer Lightfoot, Robert Wetzel, Spinning Three Plates, Corsho Wolf, Matthew Shipley, Anthony Beckett and Charles I.